Hi, thanks for joining me for today's devotion. From Isaiah chapter 35. Your God will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground, bubbling springs. In Mark's gospel, we hear how Jesus heals a man who is speeching, hearing disabled. He literally does what Isaiah had prophesied the Savior would do in our devotion text for today. Some people might say that's great that the Savior would heal people like that, but what about the people who can already see and hear and walk and talk? What do they get? But the better question to ask is, who exactly are the disabled people? Listen to what God expects all of us to be able to do, as recorded in the book of 2 Peter. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. If anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind. These are God's expectations, but who of us can claim we have the ability to do these things consistently as God wants us to? In his book, every one of us is disabled because we aren't able to do what he wants us to do. In our sinfulness, we are all blind to God's will, deaf to his commands and promises. We can't walk on the path he gives us, and we can't talk in a way that pleases him. But God has miraculously delivered each of us from our spiritual disabilities. Our Savior was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Do you hear the glorious good news? We've been healed. We can see Jesus as our light, even on the darkest night. We can hear Jesus say, your names are written in heaven. We can walk with God. We can shout praises to God. When Isaiah prophesied that the blind and the deaf and the lame and the mute would be healed, he was talking about us too. Sometimes if someone wants to impress on you that something is impossible, that person compares it to another impossibility. For example, me, go skydiving. That'll happen when I grow wings and fly. Someone might say the same thing about God's holy expectations for us. Me? Live up to God's standards? That'll happen when the desert turns into a swimming pool. Well, God's response is, get your swimming suit. Because Isaiah writes that when God comes to save us, water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In other words, the impossible will come true. Today we can see that the impossible has come true. We sinners have been covered in righteousness, healed from all of our sinful weakness. Now we can serve and praise the God who saved us. See you next time.